Hello, dears, and welcome to Alpha Sadi Virtual Lab Pathology Talks, Tips, and Practical Tips. What I'm going to be sharing with you today is a nice example of a pleomorphic xanthoastrocytoma PXA grade 3. This is a nine year old male patient who presented with recurrent uh, seizure and was found on investigation to have right temporal lobe, a tumor that was cystic with a neural module and superficially located involving the cortex. This is the low power magnification of the tumor which was very cellular, cellular, showing some calcification here and some tendency perhaps at whirling growth pattern. This is a higher power magnification where we start to see more details of the constituting cells. As you can see, the cells show some degree of pleomorphism. We have some a typical pleomorphic nuclei, other cells showing prominent nucleoli, while other tumor cells are small and they have a tendency for a spindling of the tumor cells. Here again, one of the tumor cells with pleomorphic uh, nuclear uh, formation. And this is another focus where most of the tumor cells are kind of epithelioid and they have this abundant cytoplasm. And we start here to see perhaps some eosinophilic granular bodies, I'm not quite sure. But then we have more of those epithelioid cells really forming most of the focus that I'm sharing with you right now. Other areas, again, show more of the pleomorphic nuclei that is typically described in pleomorphic xanthoastrocytoma. This is another pleomorphic nucleus. And this is a xanthomatous cytoplasm of one of the tumor cells. And we have started here to see, typi to see typical eosinophilic granular bodies. And one important feature, in addition to the pleomorphic nuclei, prominent nucleoli, again here, the pleomorphism, and the cells in general are really large and epithelioid that we tend to see intranuclear inclusions, very helpful supportive sign and more of eosinophilic granular bodies. And in this focus, we have an abundance of the EGBs actually aggregating together again a helpful supporting feature that we see in many low-grade tumors, but in particular in pleomorphic xanthoastrocytoma and of course in pilocytic astrocytoma. These are the two main tumors that show this abundance of eosinophilic granular bodies. You don't have even to look for these uh, formations. And then one other typical feature is the presence of perivascular lymphocytic infiltrate, uh, infiltrate typically seen as one important clue to the diagnosis in PXA. And in this particular uh, case, there was some tendency at a starting of a glomeruloid microvascular proliferation. So some hint towards the possibility of this being anaplastic. Other areas showed necrosis. Again, some hinting towards the possibility of anaplasia in this particular PXA. But what is really important and gives into the diagnosis of anaplastic or a grade 3 PXA is that we started to see more fibrosis and some rhabdoid like a tumor cells. This is very important. So the morphology suddenly changed from this pleomorphism and atypical nuclei into more rhabdoid appearance of the tumor cells. Excellent clue that there is a sort of perhaps a transformation of this PXA into anaplasia and definitely would support the diagnosis of anaplasia. But what you really need to find in order to render a confident diagnosis of anaplastic uh, PXA or PXA grade three is mitosis. So we need to have five or more mitoses per 10 high power fields. And in this high power field in the same area showing the rhabdoid tumor morphology. We have one mitosis here, second here, and third in just one low power magnification. So this really tends to push the case supported by the other features like the necrosis and the microvascular proliferation 
which need not to be present. They, they can not be present. We don't have to see them actually, but if we see them, this is kind of an additional clue to the diagnosis in addition to the, as I mentioned, the rhabdoid morphology of the tumor cells. Now, reticulin specialist thing is very helpful because typically in the grade two component of PXA, we have increased deposition of reticulin while we start to see, you can see the contrast with much less reticulin deposition in areas where we have the rhabdoid morphology or the uh, um, uh, grade three component of the uh, tumor. And then again, the GFAB was positive in the grade two component, but also highlighting the microvascular proliferation beautifully here, while it was much less so, much less positive in the area that showed the rhabdoid morphology. Remember, this is not a TRT. This is not a typical uh, a teratoid rhabdoid tumor. If the tumor on in this case, short rhabdoid morphology of the tumor cells. Synaptophysin, as we know, can sometimes be positive in PXA. This does not make it into a ganglion glioma because chromogranin and other neuronal markers are completely negative. P53, extremely important to perform because the anaplastic PXA or PXA grade 3 usually shows the mosaic pattern of the P53 staining. This is important in order to separate it in particular from epithelioid GBM or GBM with giant cells, which are typically P53 positive. So P53 in this case really is very helpful and serves to separate Separate the anaplastic PXA from its mimics, including epithelial GBM as well as giant cell glioblastoma. And of course, because we talked that some of the tumor cells had this rhabdoid morphology, we have to rule out a, a typical teratoid rhabdoid tumor. And INI1 immunostain was retained among the rhabdoid looking tumor cells in the higher grade component of the PXA. Now, Chi-67 in the low-grade component was like 1% to 2%, while it was up to 10 to even to 15% in the higher grade component, showing here even one mitotic figure. Now, importantly, and as we know, most uh, PXAs, up to 80% of APXAs are usually BRAF positive. This is helpful to support the diagnosis number one and to offer the possibility of a, a treatment with targeted therapy uh, uh, number two. This is why it's extremely important to perform BRAF immunohistochemistry or molecular testing, whatever you have available at your lab. And it was actually positive in both components, the component that shows the spindle cell and pleomorphic morphology, as well as the atypical rhabdoid-like morphology. So the final diagnosis in this case is a pleomorphic xanthoastrocytoma, CNSWHO grade 3. Remember that PXA can be grade 2 or or three, depending primarily on the presence of mitoses, other supportive features like necrosis and microvascular proliferation can be present. But what you really need to find is the increased mitotic activity. Remember that PXA usually presents with seizures, typically in the right uh, lobe of the brain and typically superficial uh, location with a uh, um, uh, cyst and a neural uh, nodule. These are the typical uh, radiological findings. Remember that in order to uh, separate it from a glioblastoma in general, you have to do P53. And in this particular case, because of the rhabdoid morphology of the tumor cells, I performed INI1 just to make sure that there is no really transformation or I'm not missing an atypical teratoid rhabdoid tumor. I have in the caption a link to a free article, an open access article that describes the morph radiological features, the morphology, as well as the molecular uh, uh, signature of BXA. It's a recent article, very enjoyable to read. I hope you like it. Uh, I hope you find this case useful in your daily practice. Thank you.